Hi, I'm Bharat Sivaraman, Senior Product Manager for Azure Migrate. In this video, I'll show you how the latest tool in our portfolio of Azure Migration tools can help you take an ASP.NET application that you're running on a Windows server and migrate it to Azure Kubernetes service with minimal to no code changes. The Migrate Apps to AKS tool that's currently in preview can look at the running state of an application and help you determine how you can package that in a container image that you can then use to run on a container platform like Azure Kubernetes Service. But before we look at the tool in action, let's talk a little bit about why you may want to migrate your app existing applications to Azure Kubernetes Service and what are the various other options that are available to you. There are various reasons why organizations are migrating to Azure and the migration strategy chosen is really dependent on what the migration triggers are as well as the expected business outcomes of that migration. When infrastructure driven considerations such as data center consolidation or a hardware refresh cycle are driving the migration strategy, the quickest and most efficient way to unlock value for the business is to simply rehost those applications on Azure virtual machines and then progressively embark on a journey of modernizing your applications once they've been migrated over into Azure. But when it comes to other considerations such as uh, modernizing your infrastructure and infrastructure management practices, uh, there are various Azure Pass offerings that can help out. For web apps, for instance, the Azure App Service offers a fully managed platform that's purpose-built uh, to help you build, deploy, and run your web-based applications. App Service offers uh, built-in features such as infrastructure maintenance, security patching, and uh, zero downtime deployments with deployment slots to help you run your web apps more efficiently. In addition to uh, native support for hosting web apps written for a variety of language runtimes, including .NET and Java, you can now also run Windows and Linux containers directly on App Service. If you're, looking for, if you're looking to migrate your web-based applications to a modern platform for web apps, look no further. The App Service Migration Assistant tool from Microsoft can help you migrate ASP.NET, PHP, and Java-based web applications and run them natively on Azure App Service. When it comes to Kubernetes, Kubernetes, in addition to being a great platform for developers to build and run large-scale distributed applications on, has also become the de facto standard for container orchestration in the industry. Many organizations are looking at Kubernetes to help them run their existing applications more efficiently by getting better infrastructure consolidation and utilization, fine grained resource control, and a consistent way to manage infrastructure across their entire application landscape. Now, Azure Kubernetes Service is a modern managed infrastructure platform that's the ideal choice for you to run your apps on if you need that extra control over your infrastructure, while at the same time driving key outcomes such as improved utilization and consistent management. As you look at migrating your existing applications to AKS, there are a few different ways for you to be able to do this. Now you could rewrite or refactor your application to use modern application paradigms such as microservices and then run those applications as containers on AKS. This approach, if done right, can drive important business outcomes such as faster pace of innovation and improved feature agility for your business applications. However, rewriting or refactoring the application to drive these outcomes requires skilled, de skilled developers and a level of investment that you may not be ready to make for all of your applications. But these other applications could certainly still benefit from a minimal modernization of the application infrastructure. And the Migrate Apps to AKS tool is intended to help you with exactly this latter use case. And it does so by giving you a method to quickly containerize your existing applications without fundamentally altering the application structure and to then migrate them to AKS and still get advantages of some of these benefits such as better infrastructure consolidation. So let's see how the tool works in a demo. From a demo, I have a two-tier application that's hosted on physical servers on-premises. The sample application is called the Paths Unlimited application and is a storefront website for the Paths Unlimited store. The app tier of this application is an ASP.NET application that's hosted on a Windows Server 2012 machine and the application is backed by a database server that's running Microsoft SQL Server. The website that you see open here is the storefront end application. In this demo, I'll attempt to containerize the Paths Unlimited ASP.NET application and run it as a Windows container on AKS. And to do that, I'm going to use the Migrate Apps to AKS tool that I'll also be referring to as the helper application. The helper application is a standalone application that you can run on any Windows machine, including a desktop or laptop machine. Uh, all that is required is that the machine that you're running the helper application on or should be able to connect over the network to the server that's hosting the ASP.NET application to be migrated. The helper application has a web-based interface through which you'll interact with the tool. And I've already started up that web-based interface for that helper application here. 
I've also run through an initial set of prerequisites that validates things like internet connectivity. I then have to log in to my Azure account from the tool so that the tool is able to connect to Azure services such as Azure Container Registry and Azure Kubernetes Service that the tool needs to talk to. I've logged into my Azure account as well. So at this point, I can specify in the helper app, the server, or a list of servers that's hosting the application that needs to be containerized and migrated. I do this by populating a JSON file with the fully qualified domain name or IP address of the server that's hosting the applications to be migrated. I've already done that here in my JSON file, as you can see. I can now specify this file as an input to the helper application. When that is done, the helper application will validate connectivity to the server that's specified in the, in the JSON file. It will then attempt to try and discover the list of applications that are hosted on this particular server. In order to be able to connect to the server and discover the list of applications that's hosted, it's going to need credentials to connect to that server. So let me go ahead and key in the credentials needed to connect to that Paths Unlimited web server. At this point, the helper application is starting the process of remotely connecting up to that server and discovering the list of ASP.NET applications that's hosted on that particular machine. Now, once the list of applications that are hosted on this particular server are discovered, I can select the applications that need to be containerized and migrated. So let me specify my, let me select my Paths Unlimited app. I need to specify a image name to be used for the container image that's built out for the application. I'm just going to call that Paths Unlimited and attach a V1 label to that particular container image. Now, the other cool thing that this tool can also do is it can detect application configurations and allows you to parameterize them such that they can be made into deployment time options. For example, here, uh, the tool has identified that this particular application has a backing database. And by looking at uh, well-defined connection string pa patterns, is able to identify the database connection string configuration that is there in the application config file for this application. It's now giving me the option to parameterize this such that I can make it a deployment time configuration. That way, I don't have to rebuild the container image every time I need the application to connect to a different database or if I need to test the application before I actually do the migration. Now, the helper application will automatically detect the uh, application and other dependencies that it has on the web server and try to package it into that container image. But there may be additional customizations that you may need. For example, you may choose to copy specific files or folders from the server other than the ones that's detected by the tool into the container image for the application. Say for example, that you want to include uh, the pictures folder on uh, D drive into the container image because the app uses uh, static content files from that particular folder to serve up the web pages. I could do that by specifying a list of folders or files in the optional artifacts section of this particular spec. I'm just going to stick with the defaults and select an Azure container registry that I can use to store or publish the container image that gets built. I have the option of creating a new registry from within the tool itself, but I'm going to go ahead and create or select a container registry or Azure container registry that I already have. Make sure that the target container image uh, name is all small case letters. Now at this point, the helper app based on the detected application configuration and the other selections that we've made generates a Docker file that I can use to build a Docker container image for the application. Uh, the Docker file generation uses a uh, set of base values for things such as the image to use and populate certain other properties such as uh, the port to expose the application on based on detected application configurations. Now, I have the option of performing further editing or customizations on the Docker files in line before using it to build the container image. I'm just gonna stick with the base con uh, Docker file that was generated for this particular application and use that to build out my uh, container image for this application. So let me click build. At this point, the container image build process has started. The image build itself happens in the Azure Container Registry service by using a feature of the Azure Container Registry that lets you build uh, container images on the server. 
That way I don't have to install Docker tools or any additional tools on the local machine. And I can simply use the build logs that are generated here to monitor the progress of that container image build. I fast forwarded the demo to the point where the container image is now built. And uh, I should, uh, if I go to the Azure portal, be able to see this image published into the container registry, the Azure container registry that I had selected previously. Uh, I'm now ready to start generating the Kubernetes uh, definitions and manifest YAML files that are needed to take this application and deploy it into Azure Kubernetes service. And uh, in order to do that, in order to generate those files, I'm again going to go back to my helper application that can also help me generate these YAML files that I need to deploy this application to AKS. So as you can see here, the application has detected that the build process is complete. And uh, I'll now proceed to the next step where uh, I first need to select the AKS cluster or the Azure Kubernetes cluster on which I'm going to deploy this image. I want to quickly go over to my uh, Azure Cloud Shell where I'm using the built-in bash uh, shell and uh, kube control CLI to interact with my uh, AKS cluster. So this is the uh, this is the Kubernetes uh, or Azure Kubernetes uh, service cluster that I'm going to use. It's called the Fabricam AKS cluster. As you can see now, I currently don't have any applications or any deployments running on this particular cluster. And uh, in terms of uh, nodes, I've created two, two node pools on this particular AKS cluster, as you can see, with uh, the default node pool running a bunch of Linux nodes. And I also have a second node pool that's running Windows Server nodes on which this application, uh, that's essentially a Windows container, will be hosted. So let me go back to my helper application and select the AKS cluster, the Fabricam AKS cluster that I want to use to host this application. Here again, I have the option if I want to uh, of uh, creating a new AKS cluster from within the helper app itself. I'm of course just going to stick with uh, the Fabricam AKS cluster that I've selected. At uh, this point, I can I, I need to specify the other application settings that are needed uh, for the helper application to be able to generate the YAML files. In order to do that, I'll go click the configure button here. And uh, as you can see in the configure button, I have a few different options. I have the option of specifying a prefix string to use for the Kubernetes resources that are generated. Some of the other configurations such as the number of uh, replicas that I want to use. If the application is an internet facing application, I want to select an external load balancer for the service. Or if it's an internal application, I just want to select internal. Let me go ahead and select external for now. If the uh, web application requires an uh, SSL certificate or needs to be bound to an SSL certificate, I could do that by specifying an SSL certificate. Let me specify that. And uh, finally, the last piece here is uh, this is the database connection string that uh, I had parameterized before building my application container image. So I can use this parameterized value now to specify the database that the application should connect to when it's deployed to AKS. Since this value has been parameterized, uh, I can specify a different configuration each time I deploy the application using the same generated image. So for example, I may want to perform or I do want to perform a test right now and uh, I may want to use a test copy of the database before updating the application to connect to my production database. And uh, for my demo, I've actually already created a test copy of my on-premises database in Azure with, uh, with Azure SQL. And uh, I'll use this test copy of the database to test out my application first before redeploying the image with the database connection string set to point to my actual production database. So let me go ahead and do that. I have the connection string copied already, so I'll specify that. So this is the connection string that will help the app connect to the test database that I have already deployed on Azure SQL in Azure. When I hit the continue button now, the tool will generate the YAML files that specifies the various Kubernetes artifacts that are needed to deploy the application to AKS. And uh, here again, I have the option of uh, further customizing the YAML file before I use it to deploy my application. As you can see, this file has both the deployment, uh, deployment spec for the application using the container image that was just built, um, as well as uh, as well as uh, the service spec for the load balancer that I created. I have the option here to edit uh, this file inline. I'm just going to stick with the defaults. And um, at this point, I can either take these uh, take these generated artifacts and use that with the with the with the cube control CLI to deploy the deploy the application, or I can just use the deploy button here that's available in the GUI 
to kick off that deployment process. So let me go ahead and do that. What this is now doing is it's using the Kubernetes API to start creating those artifacts that are defined in these uh, in these manifest files that were generated by the helper application. The application deployment is now complete. And when I say kubectl get uh, services, I should also be able to see a load balancer that's created for me that will help me access the application over the internet. As you can see, the application is now exposed on this particular IP address. I went ahead and actually got myself a um, DNS name or a URL that I could use with this particular application address since this is a public IP address resource in the Azure portal. So let me use this, uh, take this um, DNS name or URL and hopefully I should be able to access a now containerized version of this app, Paths Unlimited application running on AKS uh, on this URL. So as you can see, I was able to take an existing ASP.NET application that's running on a Windows Server 2012 machine and in a few simple steps, successfully containerize it and run it and get it deployed, get the application deployed on Azure Kubernetes service. To recap the demo that you just saw, the Migrate Apps to AKS tool is a standalone tool that can be run on any Windows machine. The tool can remotely connect up to a Windows Server machine that's running an ASP.NET application that you're looking to containerize and migrate to Azure Kubernetes service. The helper application will identify the components that need to be packaged together into the container image and generate a Docker file that can help you build out that container image. Further, you can also use the Azure Container Registry based build feature to build, build that uh, uh, container image and push it to your container registry. The helper application will then generate the Kubernetes manifest files that are needed to get that application migrated over into Azure Kubernetes service and can also help you deploy that application to AKS along with the parameterized configuration such as database connections. The tool works in a point and containerized fashion along with the ability to parameterize configurations that allows you to quickly containerize your applications and migrate them over into AKS. The tool also generates reusable artifacts such as Docker files and Kubernetes manifest files that you can use further for day two operations and offers customization along every step of the way. To sign up for the preview or to learn more about this tool and our roadmap for support for other languages and runtimes, visit https aka.ms slash migrate to AKS.